Hey, this is David Plotz, CEO of CityCast. CityCast is hiring a director of finance. And because you're listening to this, I thought you might be a great candidate for the job, or you might know a great candidate for the job. CityCast is a national network of daily local podcasts and newsletters. And as our director of finance, you would develop our finance strategy and lead finance and accounting. CityCast is growing super fast, and we are changing local media in the U.S. And as our first finance director, you'd work directly with me to make CityCast an amazing and innovative and fiscally sound business. The job is remote. You could be anywhere in the U.S., and we're offering a competitive salary, great benefits, and a fantastic set of colleagues. Plus, we're part of a very stable parent company. So if you're interested, please apply. Go to citycast.fm slash jobs for more information. That's citycast.fm slash jobs. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh. Running a restaurant is hard. Launching one can be even harder. And today's guest has made a business out of popping up with a new weeks. But now, at last, Fet Fisk is a real, honest-to-God, open restaurant in Bloomfield. In honor of their first day in business, we're jumping back in time to this time last year, when Chef Nick Forsberg was still for planning and fundraising this whole thing to talk about his menus, his farm, and his big ideas, plus one very big national nomination. Today, March 28th, I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. Nick Forsberg, welcome to CityCast Pittsburgh. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on your James Beard Award nomination. That's kind of amazing. Are you totally overhearing that by now? I am, but <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> I'm still. It came as a big surprise, but also at a perfect time when we were applying for our loan from the URA for the restaurant. So we just, I had to snag the application back real quick. I was like, can I just pencil uh, something in there? <laughs> like minutes, hours away from hearing whether you are moving on from semifinalist to finalist. I, I don't want to jinx it, but do you have, you know, any adoring fans to thank or anything? I didn't even know that was today. That I is honestly, today. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's another level of anxiety that I'll enjoy. <laughs> We're always here to help. So you run a pop-up called Fet Fisk or Greasy Fish. How would you describe the cuisine? Oh, I'm not getting any better at answering this question. But um, <laughs> Nordic, Scandinavian inspired kind of by yeah. my heritage. But really, it's more focused around um, sustainability and traceability of the ingredients. I run where we grow about 90% of the produce that we use and everything else is either sourced from the region or as far as seafood goes, I just make sure that it's sustainably harvested. Yeah. So that's, that's sort of like, that's sort of the backbone. But from there, it's just sort of loosely European, French inspired stuff with kind of a Nordic twist. What, what does Nordic mean for my plate? What would I see or get to experience, you know, food wise that would feel, I don't know, maybe different for some of Western Pennsylvania? Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all down to the dill. Yeah, it's like, I'll just throw some dill on here that makes a Nordic. <laughs> One single herb. Um, I mean, it's I think it's pretty simple food. Um, yeah. Did you have to do much research where you kind of pull in from family memories? Is there is there a and there definitely are a few of those. Um, but again, I only made it over there every so often, but mm -hmm. um, definitely have some standout food experiences, especially like my great grandma eating chanterelles fried in butter at her house in the country. Like, I mean, I was eight years old and that just blew my mind. I had never eaten anything like that and wouldn't eat anything like that again for another 10 years, maybe. Yeah. But it's a lot of it is like self it's sort of like self implanted or projected. Like I kind of my imagination, what I would want to see. So it's like one step away from the actual reality of most Swedish food, which is like meatballs and potatoes at a truck stop, you know, it's like, <laughs> or ke like kebab. Um, well, so it's in Lincoln Lemmington. I think I read, um, yeah. how, I guess, 
Which came first, the food or the farm? Well, initially when I started Fetfisk, um, I was working at Tiny Seed Farm um, for Todd Wilson. I was kind of like the field manager. And they're all organic, right? They are, yeah. And um, I mean, when I moved to Pittsburgh six years ago, there weren't a lot of restaurants that I was excited about working in. Um, I felt like there wasn't much. (laughs) I mean, that's not to say, I mean, like it's come a long way too, but I think transitionally it, it it wasn't seeming so um, attractive to me. And so I kind of like happenstance, I like worked at a restaurant that Todd worked at, he ran a farm and then I started working for him and really fell in love with that as like another app, like food production. And um, so I think it's always been in the back of my mind. And uh, when we first started FedFisk, anyway, this is my long story. (laughs) Go in. But like started FedFisk, I was working there. And so like we started, So no veggies then, but as soon as stuff started popping out of the ground, I was like, this, it was all over the menu. So I was like, well, this makes perfect sense. I'm going to harvest this stuff the day before dinner. Like you can't match that freshness, you know? Yeah. I'm in your garden. Right now we have peas going in the ground, arugula, dill, radishes, cabbages, and then into tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, watermelons is one of my favorite things to grow. Then we do, you know, uh, more fall cabbage, things like that. Yeah. And then with the the garden itself, how does that like kind of affect your creative process? You know, does it feel constraining to be, you know, have 90% of your vegetables come from it or is it kind of fun? Honestly, I think if someone, you know, just gave me a blank piece of paper and was like, what do you want to cook? I don't think I could come up with a single dish, but... You're an like eight crayon having, box kind of guy, not a six. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it really, you really get to like squeeze some creativity out of your brain when you're confined like that, or at least I do, I think. And I, I mean, every week I just make, I'm a huge list guy. I make lists of all the vegetables, like preserved stuff I need to use. And then the menus just come from there. So. <laughs> but what if, you know, your pop-ups are planned weeks in advance? What if a critter gets into the garden and destroys something you've got on the menu? You know, that changes things, right? It's a little inconvenient, sure. <laughs> but I mean, it's like I can, I mean, I'm at the farmer's market every week with our stand, mm-hmm. so I can kind of make up for losses there. So. Hey, Pittsburgh. I know a lot of yens have been protesting lately. And if you want to get more involved in social justice, but just don't know where to start, check out YWCA of Greater Pittsburgh's Racial Justice Challenge. It's the whole month of April, and you'll have the opportunity to complete one short racial justice activity every weekday, diving deeper into issues of race, power, privilege, and leadership. And there are different kinds of modules, so you'll get to explore ideas about about bodily autonomy, financial empowerment, caregiving, gun violence, even access to transportation. Plus, you're invited to join in-person discussion groups every Friday all month long at YWCA Greater Pittsburgh in the South Side. Learn more and sign up at ywcapgh.org. Did you know or have any kind of hunch that pop-ups would be this popular, not just in Pittsburgh, but kind of everywhere all of a sudden? I mean, the pandemic was just like, you know, a revelatory moment where people are like, maybe I don't ask for something (laughs) that's not mine all the time. And um, yeah, I mean, I know I felt that way. And I I decided to, you know, make the move to full self-employment during the pandemic. I bet. A pop-up, it's like a sandbox. People are, you know, they're trying their hand at stuff. And I think it's a great way to get started. I mean, it worked. It worked for me. It is working for you. I've wanted to go, but every time you have sold out almost instantly. I'm really impressed, actually, that the James Beard people managed to sneak their way in. Yeah. I, that was no, there was no expectation there that anything like that would happen. And then I just fell on the floor. But um, <laughs> you did. So you had no indication that they were coming at all. Yeah. Now, I mean, now it's even worse. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to like do get into planning for the year and, and deal with all this restaurant 
logistical stuff and then that dropped and then i have people beating down my door to come eat and also sell me like direct tv and uh stuff like that for the restaurant i'm like you gotta hold your horses like <laughs> it's a good problem to have yeah so this restaurant it's a location in bloomfield the old lombardozzi building um i want to play a little tape actually from your go my name is Kate Romaine. I have Black Radish Kitchen, um, and I have been a chef in Pittsburgh for about three years. Is that true? I'm elder, but I'm not ancient. <laughs> the first time he did a pop up in our space, I was more than impressed. A with his organization, the the people that are working with him, super professional, but also obviously his food is some of the best food that's happening in Pittsburgh right now, and I got really excited for his project. Restaurants are a labor of love, um, and you have to keep in the creative space. And one of the ways, you know, from my own experience, not having financial stress when you open or are a business owner is huge. Funding um, that Nick is going for will keep him in the driver's seat as far as his creativity for both his food and for his workplace culture. So he'll be able to make decisions that are informed of the way he wants to create and control his business model. Three quarters of the way towards that $40,000 goal. Uh, I've seen actually some like Pittsburgh famous and like kind of famous, famous names on your donation page. What's it been like to watch those roll in? I mean, it's been pretty great. I think we knew we would have support, but like the generosity of anyone donating but also certain people has been really humbling and um yeah i mean it'll help get us there for sure are you nervous about expanding i mean i've only seen photos pretty big like yeah. what is it like over 70 seats or something in the bar and restaurant yeah and then there's three banquet rooms Whoa. so i think total maybe the space at capacity might be like 250 oh my god <laughs> so you could say I'm a little nervous, but um, <laughs> honestly, I think like having events capabilities and the ability to expand within the space is going to really go a long way for keeping our kitchen staff well paid. And, and um, Well, so you've got your loan, you've got uh, some crowdfunding, and then you're contributing money as well. Um, correct. I don't know. How does it affect your motivation? Does it add risk? Does it add to your creative process? It added a lot of anxiety the loan application process um but i think it made i mean we put in like i'm now uh, like um greg austin of 412 and kate Romain are part owners now and um like i have some equity after running the business shipping in some and that ended up only being about i mean our total project cost is around four hundred thousand dollars so we are putting in 40 hoping to get 40 from the community via the GoFundMe and then 20, which um, we got a commitment letter two weeks ago. So I'm sleeping a lot better now. Congratulations. I know that's that's a big load off. For sure. Yeah, I've been able to shift my mindset from just ambient anxiety about that going through. We make this happen and I'm feeling energized and motivated. What's the timeline to open then? Oh, everyone wants to know, don't they? They do. Uh, but uh, we get keys to the space in June, and then we probably have seven, seven months of remodeling. So late this year, very optimistically, realistically, it's going to be probably more into next year. Do you think that you'll keep doing um, a Monday service um, when the restaurant's up and running? Yes. Cool. I think we got to... We got to keep the spirit and, um, you know, we kind of have a captive market on Mondays already and uh, there's just nowhere else to eat on Monday nope. nights. Sure <laughs> isn't. <laughs> Not after the pandemic. Yeah, we're, we're wanting to keep that spirit alive and just do a totally banging ass um, industry night. Nick Forsberg of Fet Fisk. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This was really nice, Megan. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you're wondering, no, Nick did not win-win the James Beards, but still amazing to get a nod. And good news, Fet Fisk is keeping with its tradition of Monday night service. So they'll actually be open 
5 p.m. to 10 p.m. I already have my reservation and I cannot wait to finally try all the good stuff that I have been hearing about for actual years. And Yins, remember, if you do stop by tonight or anytime over the next few weeks, please good food is really hard work and it is a special thing to share a table with someone. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. Yeah, I'm like stuck on the ride now, you know, so the bar on the roller coaster has has been securely fastened. Yeah.